Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to start a discussion on Becoming Aware of the World Around Us Part 1. Human beings and animals are able to know the world around them, hear sounds, taste various types of foods, smell different fragrances, feel the warm and cold climate outside and feel the pain when hurt. The most remarkable characteristics of the organism, human or non-human, is its possession of different sense organs. These sense organs, for example, eyes, ears, tongue, nose, skin, etc. are our windows to collect information from the external world. Each of these sense organs is selectively sensitive to different kinds of stimuli. For example, visual sense organ, which is the eye, is sensitive to receive only light energy. The ear is sensitive to the sound and so on. Human beings depend primarily on visual, auditory and cutaneous senses to gather most of the information from the world around them. About 90% of the time, we use the visual sense, followed by the auditory. In this program, we will learn about the various sense organs. What are the objectives of today's program? Today, the objective of the program are to describe the structure and function of different sense organs, let us begin with vision, audition and other senses. The sense organs, which is 10 in all, constitute the information gathering system. Eight of these sense organs are those that collect information from the external world. These are vision, audition, smell, taste, touch, warmth, cold and pain. The other two are termed as deep senses, which is vestibular and kinesthetic. They help us in maintaining body equilibrium and provide important information about body position and movement of body parts relative to each other. We will talk about the structure and function of different human sense organs and how they help us in gathering information from the external and internal world. External stimulus, for example light, is received by a specific sense organ, example eye. Within a sense organ are the specialized receptors that transform the physical energy into neural signals and this process is known as transduction, which are then transmitted to the specific areas in the brain. The pattern of neural activity is recognized by the brain. In other words, the physical energy, which is information, is received by specific sense organ. The sense organ preprocesses, that is encodes the information and the encoded information is transmitted to specific areas in the brain where encoded message is decoded and further processed which leads to perception. Let us do one exercise. Do you know sensory adaptation? Do you know that on continued stimulation the awareness of sensation involved diminishes or fades out completely? For example, if we sit in a room in which some fragrance has been sprayed. Initially, we become aware of that fragrance, but after sitting for some time, the sensation diminishes or completely fades out. This process is known as sensory adaptation. That means our senses have adapted to the smell. All sensory systems display adaptation. The sense of touch 
and smell adapt quickly whereas sense of pain adapts slowly on the other hand the process is very different in visual modality that is if you keep looking at one object the object does not fade or vanish as is the case with other senses this is possible because the eyeball due to very fast tremors keep shifting image from one set of receptors to others different type of adaptations takes place in the visual modality called light and dark adaptation let us come to the first sense which is vision the most developed and most frequently used sense organ in human beings is vision more of the brain is devoted to mechanisms for vision than to any other sense vision dominates over the information received from other senses for example what we see has more importance than what we hear in our day to day transactions within the external world we make the use of vision much more than all the senses combined about 90% of the time physical nature of the stimuli as discussed earlier each of the different sense organs is sensitive to specific physical stimulus called educate stimulus for example tactile sense which is touch and pressure is sensitive to touch or pressure upon body's skin surface similarly the eyes are only sensitive to photopic stimulation photopic is that is light that is the electromagnetic energy the light waves activate the visual receptors which are called the rods and the cones the eyes receives light reflected from objects in the world and from this we perceive color shape depth texture etc the visible spectrum for human eye ranges just below 400 nanometer nanometers or you can say millimicrons to about 750 nanometer even within this visible spectrum human eye is not uniformly sensitive to all the wavelengths let us talk about the structure of the eye each eye is about 25 mm in diameter and weighs about 7 grams the human eye consists of four major parts that is what is there in the structure of eye is first the cornea the iris the lens and the retina let us discuss how the light is processed light rays enter the eye through cornea the transparent covering in front of the eye the cornea is sharply curved it focuses the light rays on the retina behind the cornea is the pupil that appears black the amount of light that enters the pupil is regulated by the iris a ring of muscle whose pigmentation gives the eye its color which can be brown blue etc the iris contracts and dilates reflexively and regulates the amount of light that reaches the retina in accordance with brightness conditions outside iris also allows the light to adapt as light level change for example when we enter a dark room the iris dilates the pupil so that more light can enter the eye and when we step out from the dark room into bright sunlight the iris constricts the pupil to reduce the amount of light entering the eye after passing 
through a small aperture which is pupil the light rays pass through a transparent structure called lens the ciliary muscles attached to the lens modify its curvature to focus light which is accommodation on the retina the process of adjusting the lens in accordance with distance so that the image of the external object is focused on the retina is called accommodation similar to the focusing in the camera the transparent cornea in front and the tough sclera surrounding the retina of the eye serve to protect it from injury and to maintain its shape the choroid is the middle layer of dark material richly supplied with blood vessels the retina is a thin and delicate inner layer containing the photoreceptors and an elaborate network of interconnecting nerve tissues retina is the most important part of the eye the light reaches the retina by passing through the interior which is front and posterior chambers containing watery fluid which is called aqueous or vitreous humor and the various retinal layers finally it reaches the visual receptors which is the rods and the cones each retina contains approximately 120 million rods and 6 million cones located near the back of the retina these specialized cells that is the receptors convert light energy into electrical potentials or the electrical signals now this was all about the vision let's talk about other sensory processes which are other than vision we have so far discussed vision and visual process in some detail now let's take up briefly the other senses after vision audition is used more often than any other sense the senses other than vision and audition can be grouped in the following manner number 1 cutaneous senses that include pressure touch temperature which can be cold and warmth and pain second is taste third is smell fourth is deep senses that include kinesthesis and vestibular audition what is audition how does it take place the auditory receptors in the ears respond to sound waves to produce neural signals sound waves are produced by pressure changes in the atmosphere the eardrum is pushed and pulled by the compression and expansion it vibrates in a pattern that corresponds to the sound sound waves have two important physical aspects frequency and amplitude the pitch of a sound depends on its frequency higher the frequency higher the pitch for example women's voice has more pitch than that of a male frequency is expressed in units that are called hertz and are represented by capital h and small z young people can hear sounds with frequencies ranging from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz with maximum sensitivity in the middle region with age the audible range is reduced especially on the high frequency side the intensity depends upon the amplitude intensity is usually expressed in units 
that are called decibels and is represented by small d and capital B. Sounds above 120 decibel are likely to be painful to the human ear. If the sound is produced by the great number of unrelated sound waves, it is perceived as noise which we cannot analyze. The sound you hear from a jet aircraft engine or your pressure cooker is called white noise. Let us know something about the structure of the ear. The ear has three major divisions. The outer ear which consists of pina and auditory canal. The middle ear consisting of ear drum and the inner ear which is formed by three small bones called ossels namely malleus hemmer, incus which is also known as anvil and staps known as stirp also. The vibration of the oval window creates waves in the fluid that fills the cochlea. As the wave travels through the cochlear fluid the hear cells bend to and fro. At this point, the mechanical energy of the waves is transduced into electrochemical impulses that are carried by the auditory nerve to the brain. The hair cells in the cochlea are the receptors for hearing which corresponds to rods and cones for visions. That means rods and cones are the receptor cells in the vision. In the same manner, the hear cells are the receptors for hearing. The auditory nerve fibers convey the auditory information through series of relay stations to the auditory cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe of the brain. So dear learners, this was all for today in which we talked about different sense organs and particularly we discussed about vision and structure of eye and audition and structure of ear. I hope you have understood. Thank you.